hey guys how are you so guys today we are going to talk about the physiology of pancreas so guys before starting our lecture if you if you guys are new to my channel then please subscribe my channel and click the bell icon so guys the meaning of the physiology of pancreas is that the normal function of pancreas in the body physiology is the normal function of in the body and the physiology of pancreas is the normal function of pancreas in the body so pancreas performs two types of functions in the body the exocrine function exocrine function and the endocrine function so before knowing about the exocrine and the endocrine function we must know that what are the exocrine and endocrine glands okay so the exocrine gland are those glands which secretes their substance which secretes their secretion not in the blood anywhere else but not in the blood it may be into the GIT or somewhere else okay and the endocrine glands are those grand glands which secretes their secretion in the blood directly into the blood into the circulation okay so this is the main difference in the endocrine and exocrine glands so the pancreas is a very important organ because it has both exocrine function and the endocrine function okay so now what are the types of the cells which performs the exocrine and endocrine functions in the pancreas so you must know about the acne cells acne cells performs the exocrine function in the pancreas and the very famous cell the islets of langerhorn it performs the endocrine function in the pancreas okay so in this video we are only going to discuss about the exocrine function of the pancreas and so mainly about the acne cell okay <coughs> so guys i have made just a little small diagram it is not an anatomical diagram just a normal diagram to explain you about the physiology of pancreas so let's first talk about you can see that here is the pancreas okay so where are these acne cells are present inside the pancreas you can see here here these black ones are the acne cells okay but i have just made only little but approximately everywhere everywhere these acne cells are present in the pancreas only one percent portion is remaining inside the pancreas and all the other places is covered by the acne cells okay so how much portion is compromised by the acne cell 99 percent of pancreas okay so it has compromised 99 percent of the pancreas okay and what these acne cells secretes acne cell cells secretes digestive enzymes okay digestive enzymes and here is also a duct which is known as main pancreatic duct and what does it secretes sodium and bicarbonate okay these are the two things look here the acne cells will secrete its digestive enzyme into the main pancreatic duct and this main pancreatic duct will secrete what sodium and bicarbonate okay and all all of this will go where into the second part of the duodenum and this is the bile duct coming bile duct and bile duct will combine with the main pancreatic duct and it will drain into the second part of the duodenum okay so this is how the secretion will go into the duodenum and here it will do its function so what are the function of those secretion and what are the names you can see the ducts it has only sodium and bicarbonate so it is easy to remember and it is very clear but the digestive enzymes are also divided into many types okay as let me tell you number one is proteolytic enzymes the first one is the proteolytic enzymes and what is the second one Second one is the carbohydrate 
splitting enzyme okay the carbohydrate splitting enzyme and what is the third one lipolytic enzymes so guys there are three types of three types of enzymes in uh, which are secreted by the acne cells three are its types but they are not only three they also have many different types um, i mean different names because of their functions the number one by the proteo uh, number one proteolytic enzyme is the trypsin and the second one is chymotrypsin and the third one is carboxy polypeptide and the fourth one is ribonuclease and the fifth one is deoxy ribo deoxy ribo nuclease okay and the carb carbohydrate splitting enzyme includes just the one pancreatic amylase okay and the lipolytic enzymes include three enzymes pancreatic lipase cholest cholesterase esterase and phos phospho lipase so these are the three types of lipolytic enzymes so guys uh, the proteolytic enzymes name indicates that what does it do it does protein breakdown okay and carbohydrate splitting clearly indicate that it is carbohydrate breaking enzyme and the lipolytic indicates lipid breaking enzyme okay so these uh, things include uh, breakdowns the these proteins carbohydrate and lipids within the food or the chyme which is inside the small intestine okay so this is the normal function and this you can remember these names trypsin chymotrypsin carboxypolypeptidase ribonuclease deoxyribonuclease it is very easy trypsin chymotrypsin ribonuclease deoxyribonuclease only one is tough carboxypolypeptidase uh, carboxy polypeptidase so it, uh, you can uh, just memorize it and the carbohydrate splitting enzyme include pancreatic amylase lipolytic enzyme include pancreatic lipase cholesterase cholesterol and the phospholipase okay so their function is protein breakdown carbohydrate breakdown and lipid breakdown and what is the function of these enzymes which are secreted by the duct their function is to neutralize acid of the stomach or the small intestine in the GIT because when the breakdown will start the acid will uh, will also be secreted more so these these uh, substance will neutralize that acid okay so this was all about the ducts and uh, the acne cells uh, secretion and their function so now what how much is this uh, secretion daily how much uh, daily secretion will occur by the pancreas daily secretion and what is the pH of this secretion the, se the daily secretion is about 1200 ml 1200 ml and the pH is about 8.0 okay so it must only be uh, only around 1200 ml but if it gets more then the pancreas will start to lose its function because of extra load on pancreas so uh, we must uh, try to avoid of making this secretion more so uh, we for that we must know that what are those stimulating factors which stimulates the secretion of the pancreas okay so we can avoid its over exertion so let me write here the stimulating factor stimulating factors so these stimulating factors includes gastrin secretin cholecystokinin and acetylcholine 
so what does this shows that the secretion occurs when the food is in food comes inside when we eat food gastrin is secreted in stomach secretin and cholecystokinin all these three are secreted in the stomach due to the food okay in response to the food so uh, we must uh, avoid a lot of food so we can prevent ourselves from giving the damage to the pancreas okay so these are secreted when these are secreted the acne cells and the duct becomes active and they start secreting their enzymes these are their enzymes okay and acetylcholine is a uh, secreted by the vagal vagal nerve on the uh, pancreas by the parasympathetic nervous system it is the parasympathetic vagal stimulation okay the sympathetic uh, it is a neurotransmitter secreted by the vagus nerve and it and it is uh, and it stimulates the secretion of pancreas because acetylcholine uh, increases the motility of the stomach so it it only don't it is only not secreted due to the food it is also secreted for the dilation of arteries and many other purposes as well but it is also secreted in response to food and then pancreas starts its uh, enzyme secretion okay and there is one more thing left that description is normally in other form okay it is in trip trypsinogen form chymotrypsin and carboxypolypeptidase is also in chymotrypsinogen form and it is in pro carboxypolypeptide form okay so they are converted into active form when it goes into the stomach by the release of enterokinase by the intestine okay the when it goes into the intestine the intestine secretes enterokinase and then it's uh, it converted into trypsin and these two are then converted by the trypsin into their active form okay and all the other things are in the active form already only these two are in inactive form and it is converted by the enterokinase and uh, the other two are converted into active form by trypsin so this is all about the physiology of pancreas there is nothing more you can find in any book and this is uh, enough for the exams okay so guys if you like my lecture then please subscribe my channel and click the bell icon okay and if you want me to make uh, lectures on some other topic then please comment in the comment section and i will make lectures on other topic as well so this was all about the exocrine function of the pancreas and in next lecture we will talk about the famous islets of langerhorn and its endocrine function okay so guys so guys bye bye see you